Everybody, and welcome to another installment of Testify Tuesday. I am your host, Felicia Joseph, aka the Anointed Songbird, and I am so honored that you guys have come to spend a little bit of time with me on the Testify Tuesday platform this evening. I know it has been uh, a few. Uh, how do you say it? A few um, rescheduled broadcasts. There have been a few canceled broadcasts. I truly do apologize. Just keep me in prayer because there have been a lot of things that are going on. There are a lot of uh, new things, good things uh, that are going on with me and it's causing my regular schedule and how I actually plan to do things to change. Things have been changing lately. Um, But I am so glad, so excited to be here with you guys this evening. So uh, without any further ado, we're not going to belay the hour or belay the time that we spend before you. Remember, we are still well into, almost at the end of a very important month. Not only is this Breast Cancer Awareness Month where we rock our pink, but it's also the month where we rock our purple for Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Amen. So we're rocking our purple this evening for Domestic Violence Awareness. And I know some of you might think, you know, you've never been in an abusive relationship, mentally, physically, emotionally, anything like that. Um, But nine times out of 10, you do know someone who has suffered or is currently suffering through domestic violence. So this is just a month that we bring awareness to it um, and think about all of the ways that it may not affect us personally, but it affects someone that we know. It affects someone that we're close to. It affects someone that we work with, that we pass every day, that we interact with every day. So as you can see, I'm rocking pink on my nails and I'm rocking purple in the accessories this evening for not only breast cancer awareness, but domestic violence awareness as well. So we're going to jump right in. We're going to start off tonight's uh, installment. Remember, all month long, all October long on Testify Tuesday, we are not only doing um, viewer testimony. So all of you who wanted to, you are able to just, you know, cut, um, present your testimonies in, type them up and submit them to me via email or my website. And I am sharing viewer testimonies for the month of October. So we have three phenomenal testimonies for this evening that we are going to share along with gospel music from my favorite independent gospel artist. Okay. So of course I have a heart for them being an independent gospel artist myself, 
But tonight we're going to hear some encouraging music, some uplifting music, some powerful music, some devil move out of my way music, some empowering music from some of my favorite independent gospel artists. And we're also going to hear three viewer submitted testimonies on how good God has been. Because sometimes, you know, we can live in our bubble. We can be in our bubble and think that the only thing going on in the world is what's going on with us, not realizing that our sisters and brothers are warring. Our sisters and brothers are are fighting in the spirit. Our sisters and brothers are, are going up against strongholds, demonic entities, and any and everything all day, every day. But it's easy for us not to know that because it's not our situation. So Testify Tuesday brings, you know, a platform for everyone. It doesn't matter race, creed, color, orientation, any of that. It does not matter. All that matters is what has God done for you? What has God shown himself mighty and strong for you? What victory did our Lord and Savior fight for you and win for you and just hand to you? What did you go through that you thought, I can't do this. I can't handle this alone. I can't deal with this. This is too big for me alone, but the situation still worked itself out. What happened with you that you can share with someone else? Amen. So that's what Testify Tuesday is all about. So we're going to go ahead and start with a song that actually touches me. It's from one of my favorite independent groups right here in the Florida area. Okay. If you have not heard of these artists that I'm going to be playing today, I, I, I urge you, I strongly urge you to look them up on social media, look them up on all of the streaming sites and all of the places that you can actually get their music, look them up and support these artists because this music I mean, music is powerful. The message, the words, the 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 feeling that you get from music, it's something that cannot just be explained easily. So I want you to go ahead and support these artists. So tonight, the first song that we're going to play, the first song to uplift, the first song to, to bring joy, the first song to help lift burdens, is from uh, a group of, of gentlemen right here in Florida. And the name of their group is Sincere. Amen. So we are going to start tonight with Sincere. And the name of this song is My Hope. So while the song is playing, as you know, how we always do on Testify Tuesday, when you come in, please like and share and comment with one thing. This is your free reign to go ahead and shout out your savior. Shout out what the Lord has done for you. Shout out how God has blown your mind on this week. Whether it's something that happened years ago, whether it's something that happened a few minutes ago, no matter what it is, this is your free time to shout out what God has done for you while we open up with my hope from Sincere. Here we go. It's hard to do make it Make it all on my own I was not a desert lady oh, If it wasn't for your grace and mercy I kneel and pray, Lord, give me the strength. You took my dark deeds, shine your light on me, so I can see I have a victory. Greater things are ahead. I'm moving forward, full steam ahead. Oh, 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 oh. Make it all on my own. Ever if it wasn't for your grace and mercy, Lord, I'm grateful. Grateful, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank 
you made. You opened my eyes to see. In spite of all the wrong I've done, your love has lifted me. When I felt like I wouldn't make it through the night. You stepped in, in the nick of time. Your grace and mercy brought me joy and divine. Oh. Day after day. Day after day. Remember, like and share and comment with what God has done for you. Shout out our Lord and Savior. know without a shadow of a doubt, there is nothing that anyone can say that can change your mind and, and make you believe anything other than Jesus Christ is our hope. He, he, he is all we need when we feel like there is nothing left, when we feel like there's nothing left worth fighting for, when we feel like we have no strength, when we feel like the enemy has won, when we feel like we are completely defeated, we have hope. The songwriter says, my hope is built on nothing less. Hallelujah. So Jesus is my hope. And if you are a believer, if you have been washed in the blood of the lamb, if you have turned your life over to God and have been reborn, if you are, are, are claiming to be a Christian, if you are claiming to be a child of God, if you are claiming to be blood washed and blood brought, guess what? Jesus is your hope. Hallelujah. So we thank um, the, uh, I told you I'm playing music from groups that I love. And I know a lot of times, you know, radio hosts, podcast hosts, they, they try to cater to what their viewers like. And there are many times that I do that, but this month, this month I'm sharing with you from me. I'm pouring out of me into you. And these are songs that help me when I'm down, when I'm struggling, when I feel like I can't make it anymore. These are the things that I pop into my CD player or I, I, I pull up my phone and start streaming because they bring me joy. They bring me encouragement. They bring me strength, which is really what the gospel music industry is all about. Amen. So I'm sharing that with you. So what you just heard was sincere is the name of the group. And the song was entitled my hope. So we're going to jump right in so that we don't belay uh, the time or belay the hour. And we're going to read our first of uh, viewer written testimony for today. As I show, as I told you, we're going to share three testimonies from viewers and this testimony, the first one that I'm going to read tonight, be comes from my aunt. So this is someone I know personally. This is someone that I can vouch for. This is someone who helped raise me. Um, and she has a powerful testimony. Now, I, I, I got what she wrote in for you guys. But when I tell you, one day we're going to have her on as a guest so she can just delve into specific you know, parts of her testimony as the spirit leads her to, to share it with you because she is a powerful woman of God. All right. 
So our first testimony for the evening comes from Alicia Bratton of High Point, North Carolina. Here we go. At 28 years old, in a bad marriage and raising a two-year-old girl, I realized I was completely broken and could no longer try to make it on my own. I had been born and raised in the church, but had never accepted Jesus Christ as my savior. I thought I could do like other people and live in the world without Jesus. Oh, how wrong I was. The devil was having a field day with my life. I'd married the wrong man. I'd brought a beautiful, innocent child into that mess. And all I wanted to do was escape it all. I was so angry and depressed because I felt that I had nowhere to turn. How many people know or have ever been in that situation before? How many people know someone who may be fighting through that situation now? See, this is why it's so important for us to share our testimonies. Amen? So I felt I had nowhere to turn. Then I looked at my baby girl and I remembered the beautiful Christian mother that had raised me. And as I said, God, I don't want to let this child down. I want to give her what my mom gave me. I have to turn my life around for her. I want my daughter to be able to say about me what I could say about my mom. And that was, I have never seen my mother be anything but a true woman of God. That is when I gave my heart to Jesus. And it was the best thing that ever happened to me and my daughter. Today, we are both in love with Jesus and running for our lives. I love the Lord with all my heart and would like to encourage all young mothers and let them know tonight that they need Jesus in order to really be good mothers to their children. I love you, my sweet niece. Continue to pray my strength in the Lord and keep allowing him to use you for his glory. This was a testimony submitted by Alicia Bratton, as I said, from High Point, North Carolina. And I know there will always be people who don't agree or people who have different viewpoints or people who feel differently about situations. But I agree with that. For you to truly be the best mother you can, for you to truly raise your children amazingly, Jesus Christ is never a bad addition to your parenting style. Amen? Amen. So that is something that we all can, can uh, relate to. We can all talk about it. We've all known somebody or we all can, um, we all can, um, what is it? Um, think about or, 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 or be in the mind of and understand in this day and age, marrying the wrong person, being in a bad marriage, thinking, oh, this is great. I'm so in love. We're going to be just, we're going to be Ken and Barbie. We're going to be Cinderella and Prince Charming for the rest of our lives. And then once you get in it, you realize Oh my Lord, this was not ordained by God. What did I do? I made this decision on my own. And now I am in a world of hurt, pain, despair, and torture. We've all done it or know someone who has done it. So to know that there was someone who felt this way, to know there was someone who experienced this, but she then quickly remembered her Christian mother, how she was raised, those little nuggets that was dropped in her spirit, those little things that, that became a part of 
the core of who she was and she was able to pull back on them and realize a change needs to be made here. Amen. So I am so grateful and I am so happy that Alicia Bratton, my auntie, my baby aunt at that, ha, huh, <laughs> wrote in to share her testimony and her experiences with us on this evening. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into more music. The song that we're going to play now is entitled Just For Me. Because a lot of times when we go through stuff, a lot of times when we deal with situations, a lot of times when situation after situation, after bad thing, after turmoil, after, oh my God, here's another problem. And oh my God, here's another problem is piled on top of us. Sometimes that's when the enemy will try to sneak in to try to place in our minds, oh, this is too much. Um, if the God you serve is so mighty, why are you struggling? If the God you serve is so all powerful, why has he not lifted this cup of sorrow from you? And a lot of times we can lose sight of who we are in Christ, whose we are. We can lose sight of of being of the royal priesthood, of being royalty, of being the apple of God's eye. We can lose sight of that when all of our turmoil is on top of us. So Just For Me is a song by yours truly, myself, and it just reminds us of the huge, enormous sacrifice that God and Jesus made for just you. When he was on that cross shedding that blood, he had committed no sin. He had done no wrong. He had nothing to be sorry for. He had nothing to pay penance for. Like the song that says, I, I owed a debt I could not pay. But God did it just for you. How special are you? that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords died in your place, that the blameless gave up his life to buy your pardon, to buy my pardon. So whenever the, the, the weights of life start feeling really, really heavy, just remember Jesus paid a price and we can all talk about, oh, it's unbelievable. Oh, my God, no man would do that. Oh, this, but he did. And he did it just for you. This next song is entitled Just For Me by the anointed songbird, me, Felicia Joseph. All good people come together and sing this praise up Who way in the beginning before time began That knew it would be Someone sinless, someone blameless To pay the price for my forgiveness With no doubt or no hesitation Jesus died to save the nation He bloody died to sacrifice Give me a right to the tree of life let me hear you walk right, send up your walk right, girl. Oh, 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 oh. Take away your cry. It doesn't matter what I did or who I was. Jesus raised it with his blood. Just for me. Just for me. Oh, he yeah. Just for me. Just for me. 
It is finished. But three days later, it's just a fact. <laughs> Jesus Christ shed his blood, gave up his life, hung on that cross and died just for me. If you believe that, just type in the comments, just for me. Amen, amen, amen. So no matter what we're going through, no matter what tests and trials we face, we know God did it just for us. He's there. He's fighting for us. He's interceding for us. He has our backs. He's supporting us. He is our everything. Amen. 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 So we're going to go into another viewer testimony. And this viewer testimony comes from um, Martinsville, Virginia. All right. So this is from Chels Carter from Martinsville, Virginia. Oh, y'all saw me trying to read like I didn't need my glasses. I still think I'm young, but you know, the body will let you know you are not as young as you think you are anymore. <laughs> so here we go. At the age of 13 years old, my life changed drastically. I began hanging with the wrong people and engaging in activities that led to addictions and strongholds that I couldn't shake and now even still praying for God to help me. Pornography, sex, and alcohol seemed to be what I felt kept me sane. Anytime anything happened that I couldn't handle, I would immediately run back to each of those things just to engage myself in pleasure to escape the realities that I was facing. I knew God and would always speak of how great he was and how much I loved him, but my life showed otherwise. Growing up with everyone in your family being in ministry and well known didn't make it better for me. Growing up with everyone in your family, uh, excuse me, constantly having people bash me for what I was doing all because of who my grandparents were instead of praying for me and for God uh, to save my soul, that was an issue and a concern. As years passed, I found myself constantly being in and out of the hospital. The doctors told me to get myself together, or if not, that was going to be it for me. If I, uh, excuse me, the life that I knew would be gone. When the doctors told me this, I honestly didn't care. Jesus. If I died, I died was my motto. Even though I remained silent with everything I was dealing with, 
there were a few special people who took notice of my cry for help, even though I was silent. And the tarrying services began. The encouragement began. I stopped fighting, but they never stopped fighting for me. Now at the age of 26, I know that God is a deliverer and a healer. The things I used to love the taste of, I no longer enjoy anymore. The things I used to do, I find myself not even desiring it anymore. I keep God first in my life and I'm encouraging you to keep God first in your life. And when you can't handle things, cry out to him, run to him. He can handle it better than you can. And you won't find yourself in a pit of addictions and strongholds. Be thankful for those people in your life you are that are sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And no matter what you do, love God with your entire heart and let your life show it. Now I am able to help others who were in similar situations as me. Never forget that your testimony can save someone's life. Amen. So that was another testimony that was written in from a viewer from Chels Carter in Martinsville, Virginia. And these are these are uncomfortable things. These are taboo things. These are things that people aren't free to just talk about and open up about. But I thank God that there are those who can say, I dealt with this. I went through this. If it were not for the grace and power and love of God, I would still be in this, but I'm not because I'm delivered, because I'm set free, because I'm healed. Hallelujah. Because God can do it. Amen. So we talk about all of this. And one of the biggest things that I want to point out when we do Testify Tuesday, one of the um, key points that I want to leave with you, the Testify Tuesday crew, is that if I don't want you to give in or give up or, or just throw in the towel, I don't want you to just give up to your situation. What I want you to do instead is give it all up to God. Throw your hands up and surrender. Throw your hands up to say, God, I, I can't do this. Throw your hands up to say, God, I need you. Give your all, surrender your all. Your throwing your hands up is just a sign, a declaration that God, I need you because I can't do this by myself. I can't handle this by myself, but I know if I submit myself and completely surrender to you, hands up, God, you will take over and you will deliver me. Hallelujah. So we're going to go into our next song. And our next song is from a very good friend of mine. Our next song is entitled Hands Up by Trayvon Perry and Divine Purpose. Here we go. Listen, I want all my praise party people to get up on your feet right now. Come up and just clap your hands. We're going to have fun on this song. Tell your neighbor, I don't know what you come to do, but I came to get my... I don't know what you come to do, but I came to get my dad's on. Y'all ready? Come on. Let's go. Right here. I don't know what you come to do, but I came to get my praise on. I don't know what you come to do, but I came to get my day on. I don't know what you come to do, 
But I came to get my praise on. I don't know what you come to do. But I came to get my dance on. You sing. I don't know what you come to do. But I came to get my praise on. I came to get my praise on. Say, I don't know what. I don't know what you come to do. But I came to get my dance on. I came to get my dance on. I don't know what. I don't know what you come to do. But I came to get my praise on. Come on, there's a praise party going on. Say, I don't know what. I don't know what you come to. Y'all ready to rock with us right here? I came to get my hands up. Here we go. Hands up. Hands up. All my people to the front. Come on. Hands up. All my people to the side. Hands up. Let me see you in the back. Yeah. Hands up. Give them up real high. Hands up. All my people to the front. All my people to the side. Let me see you in the back. Testify Tuesday crew, we are almost done. We have one more viewer testimony to read. And after that, one last song and we are good. Amen, amen, amen. So we're going to end this uh, Testify Tuesday testimony a read-in session with a testimony from a very good friend of mine. Um, and this is the Salvog family. Um, I met Dean over a year ago and meeting Dean, I also met his wife and his children and they 
encourage me so much and they lift me up so much and they speak into me and 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 give me encouragement sometimes even without knowing it their intention isn't to encourage me but just listening to the things that they've been through the things that they've um uh overcome and how I don't know the best word to use, how, you know, sometimes when we go through something, even when we tell the story, when we're talking about it and we say it uh, back, there's a tone to it that lets the listener know that you're a little upset about what you went through. It's none of that. When Dean and his family talk to me about trials that they've been through, situations that they've been through, life experiences that the Lord has brought them through, it's just gratitude and gratefulness and love, genuine love of Jesus Christ that is in their tone when they're telling the story. So you already know I could not help but fall in love with this family. And I am so honored that they thought it not robbery to write in and um, give a testimony to share with the Testify Tuesday crew. So the last testimony of the night comes from uh, Yuli, Florida, and it comes from the Salvog family. All right, here we go. When asked, how has God shown himself in our lives, I can only reply that every day there is evidence of his working in our lives. God has led us as a family at the beginning of this 2019 year to try to get together every night and pray. My extended family, the Wardens, that's her maiden name, Bonnie, um, the Warden Clan had already established a weekly list for prayer. I have six other siblings and one remaining aunt. So that being said, we had seven days in the week. Thus, one day is designed to each sibling. Every day I prayed for my brothers and sisters and their extended family, my nephews and nieces and their spouses and children. So we, my family of four, always know which day is for which sibling. Then we divide up our own personal prayer requests amongst each other. We have seen so many answers to prayers as we have prayed through the family list and our own personal list. This prayer time has brought us closer together as a family. We can share with each other and know that at the at that moment, prayers are being lifted up to our Lord in complete confidence that he will answer those requests. God has blessed our time together. And no, we don't always have the chance to pray together every night due to work schedules, tiredness, but I can honestly say that God has proven that he is faithful even when we are not. How many know that's one of the most lovable attributes about God? I love him so because even when with my unfaithful self, with my on today, off tomorrow self, with my, oh, God, forgive me, I'm going to run and try to make a 100, but tomorrow I'm like, yeah, I'm going to stay here at 30 self. God is still faithful even when we are not. Amen? That is one of the most lovable things, in my opinion, about our Savior. We pray for extended family also. Those that we have had living in our home or have passed through our life for a time and then for pressing daily requests that have come up during our work week. Lifting our requests to God's throne has shown us how we are not able to do life on our own. We need him daily. Our church's motto is, 
Life is all about God and he is all about relationships. <laughs> Catch that. I'm going to read that again. Our church motto is life is all about God and he being God is all about relationships. If we keep that in perspective, we will continually see him at work in our lives. Ephesians 1 and 16 says, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. First Timothy 2 and 1 says, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people. So that last testimony, like I said, came from Yulee, Florida. And there were a lot of key points in that testimony. Yes, it's easy to get caught up with what we're going through. Yes, it's easy to get caught up with what we're dealing with. Yes, it's easy to get caught up with us. To be me, 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 I, 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 my family, my family, my family, my people, my people, us, 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 us. But when we can push past that, when we can get past that and start to think of the bigger picture and pray for our sisters and our brothers, that is what God's plan is. We we say we're followers of Christ. We say, we always sing to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus. How I long to be like him. So meek and lowly, so humble and holy. How I long to be like him. We say that all the time, but God was about, Jesus was about his brother, his sister, his fellow man. So when we can know we're going through something, realize we need God, realize that we stand in need of something, but overlook that and pray for our sister and brother who has some situations going on. How beautiful is that? So we all know that uh, before before I close, I just want to thank all. I want to thank Elise, Alicia Bratton. I want to thank Charles Carter. And I want to thank Bonnie Salvog and the Salvog family for writing in and sharing you guys' testimonies with us on this evening. I thank you. Because I know it's not easy to to bear yourself, to expose yourself, to share, you know, sensitive information about yourself. But I thank you and I applaud you for sharing with your sisters and brothers so that what God has helped you through or dealt with you and, and brought you through can help someone else who might be going through it. Because at the end of the day. I wrote a song that's on my album that's entitled Live Again. If you think about it, we are all living now for the purpose of being able to live again. I'm living now to live again. I'm living this earthly life to live again for eternity in heaven with my Savior. Amen. So the goal of all of this I mean, you can live the perfect life. You can you can love your enemy. You can pray for those that deceitfully use you. You can you can do it all. But the goal of doing this, the goal of it is to make heaven your home. So we're going to close out tonight with the last song. And this song is from my sister, also another Florida resident, Trenisha. McCullough, and the song is called The Goal. Here we go. You can gain the world and then lose your soul, but heaven is the goal. For me, I can't speak for you. 
Heaven is the goal. Paint the world in the lunch soul. Heaven is the goal. For me, I can't speak for you. Heaven is the goal. One time for the King of Kings, yeah. Two times for the Lord of the Lord, yeah. Believe it or not, he sent every time to take his children home. And I pray that we all be ready. Don't be caught up in trying to do your own thing. This crazy world is spinning round and round. Wherever you find yourself in this earthly life, remember that it's only temporary. Pain the world and you lose your soul. Heaven is the goal. For me, I can't speak for you. Heaven is the goal. Pain the world and you lose your soul. Heaven is the goal. For me, I can't speak for you. This is critical, please take me serious I get your mind on the prize, get focused I'm stuck in time, but late for return to life Yeah, how about that? Hey, I'm on my way to heaven And you can come along if you want to You just gotta give your life to Christ Wherever you find yourself in this earthly life Remember that it's only Temporary. Pain the world and you lose your soul. Heaven is the goal. For me, I can't speak for you. Heaven is the goal. Pain the world and you lose your soul. Heaven is the goal. For me, I can't speak for you. Heaven is the goal. If you wanna go to heaven, listen here. Gotta give your heart to Jesus and he will save you. Heaven and earth will pass away, but you can be made new. He'll save you. Yeah. If you want to go to heaven, yeah. listen here. Gotta give your heart to Jesus and he will save you. Heaven and earth will pass away. But you can be made new to save you, yeah. In the world and in the world so Heaven is the goal. For me, I can't speak for you. Heaven is the goal. In the world and in the so Heaven is the goal. For me, I can't speak for you. Heaven is the goal. Amen, amen, amen. Heaven is the goal. How many people know that? No matter what we go through, no matter what we face, no matter what situations uh, are, are there for us, whatever uh, strongholds, pitfalls are in our way, it's all worth it because heaven is the goal. Amen. So I want to thank you all for tuning in. I also want to let you know that we have one more week. We have two more episodes, but one more week. Um, Cause we have a testify Tuesday episode and then we have uh, it's time to testify. So we have two more episodes within this month that you're able to submit your testimonies into me. So if you have a testimony that you want to share that you think would help someone that would touch someone or speak to someone right where they are and encourage them, I urge you to please submit it, type it out and send it to me at theanointedsongbird at gmail.com. In the subject line, please put written testimony. That's what I need. Written testimony in the subject line and send it to the anointed songbird at gmail.com. You have two more uh, installment episodes for this month for you to be able to share your testimony. Amen. I would like to thank everyone who contributed to this installment of Testify Tuesday. I would also like to thank everyone who logged on and participated. And I ask you to please like and share. You never know who it is that might be attached to your timeline or attached to someone else who's attached to your timeline. So just a quick 
click of the share button and you can get this to someone who really needs it. Amen. So if all hearts and minds are clear in the way of announcement, remember tomorrow we will be doing chit chat with Felicia Joseph um, and chit chat. The chit chat episode for tomorrow is whose fault is it? The danger of playing the blame game. So chit chat is our relationship chat talk. So we're going to be talking about that. Whose fault is it? The danger of playing the blame game. Tomorrow night, 8 p.m. right here. Tune in with it. And we also, we had to cancel testify to, uh, excuse me, we had to cancel chit chat yesterday, but we are going to reschedule in the next couple of days, the chit chat episode uh, from that was supposed to air yesterday. That's going to feature comedian Stefan Smith. He's going to come on as my co-host as we discuss when it comes to dating, is there a such thing as moving too slow? And if so, how slow is too slow? We're going to be talking about that, some, uh, not tomorrow. We're going to be talking about that soon within the next couple of days. So keep your eyes peeled on the page for that information. All right. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for all that you have done, all that you are going to do, and all that you have already done, God, and what you are currently doing. God, we ask you to please go with us, God. I ask you, God, to be with everyone under the sound of my voice at this very minute. Bless them, God. Keep them, God. Talk to them, God. Encourage them, God. Let them know what needs to be done. God, I ask you if there's something that they stand in need of, God. God, you know better than I do, God. You know exactly what all of us stand in need of. God, I, I implore you to meet the need, God, right now. Touch the heart. Prick the heart, God. Reclaim the backslider, God. Uh, claim in the, the new recruit, God, coming into you. God, it is the last and evil day and we need you, God. We need you more than ever. God, help us to put ourselves down, less of us and more of you, God, so that we are equipped and able to stand and fight the fight that needs to be fought, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we won't fail to give you glory, honor, and praise to acknowledge you for being ruler and King of all, God, because you are the one true and living God, God, and we give honor and praise to you. We thank you in advance for all that you are going to do. And until we meet again, we say thank God and amen. All right, Testify Tuesday crew. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. God bless you, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>